All right, welcome to the briefing video for the group assignment. First thing of note is those of you who undertook the second or third topic in the solo project, welcome to the PWX data set. Now, to start, I just want to clarify the difference between the solo project and the group project with regards to the PWX data. In the solo project, you were allowed to look to the future. The data set you're working to is from 2005 and one of your instructions in the solo project if you're working on the PWX data set was to address anything that may have changed, may have been discovered from 2005 to uh, the submission of the assignment, so 2012, which would negate sections of the assignment. Now for the group project because you are provided the data set, you are effectively being given a case study. Now the data is real life from 2005 and it's time capped at 2005. You cannot now go out and update key sections of the data sets by reference to contemporary material, contemporary content. This means uh, in no short order, one, you do not have to change the ages of the respondents. For the purposes of this exercise, you may keep them as their 2005 age bracket. So someone born in 1973 gets to be the, you don't have to recalculate the age. Second thing is that you're being asked to make a set of decisions on the data set and the content within the data set it does not matter what has taken place in reality since 2005. You are not being judged on your ability to go out and find an existing organisation and seeing what they've done. You're being judged on your ability to take raw data, analyse it, interpret it, and then write up a set of responses. So it doesn't matter what PWX got up to after that data set. It matters what you used to advise them to do. And there are no marks for the actual right or wrong aspect here. There's no, if you say green or you say red, you'll get more marks for green than you will for red. You will get marks for how well you justify and explain yourself. So that's the overall principle. Uh, you can't, based, the other area where you can't do an update is you cannot update the list of Canadian wrestlers that's in the open-ended data. But I do need you to be aware that between 2005 and now, several of the wrestlers who are named in that set have died because wrestling is one of those things where there is actually a reasonably high mortality rate. And look, just for the sake of argument, let's just knock Chris Benoit out of the framework as an acceptable endorser. Don't necessarily want to explain why, but I think probably one quick trip to Wikipedia will let you see why. So pick someone other than him, okay? even if he does score really well on the objective measures. That's the only point where 2005 and 2012 are going to uh, meet, is that when you are making a recommendation about who would be a good endorser, if there is a good endorser, you might want to take pay attention to what's actually happened with this person. Like, are they still around here to endorse? Okay, so the rest of this video is going to be a discussion of the component elements of the assessment task. Which means if you pretty much nailed out one section you might get a little bit bored, you might need to skip ahead, so good luck with that. First thing is this is one of the pieces of additional information I was going to provide you. I said I'd give you another document. Uh, that's the survival guide which I'm currently still working on and finalising. I uh, really appreciate everyone who's come to see me and everyone sent me emails asking me questions because that's how I write these guides and how I write these uh, additional support materials is I take the questions I've been asked by students who have come to see me in consultation and pretty much develop a frequently asked questions approach. Yes, I'm from the internet. Uh, you might have gathered that by the stuff over my shoulder. The second thing with the survival guide is that you already have 
two documents in play. Group assignment topic final version two, group assignment guides draft one. This third document that's going to come out, the survival guide, is the third in the series. Uh, it will over if it overwrites anything, it's the most recent version, so you'll have updates and clarifications. But you still need to have looked at the other two. They will help you a lot. And I think you'll find the group assignment guides draft one to be particularly useful. The other two things I just want to say is that uh, there won't be an extension. Short of an act of um, Moodle or an act of Waddle, I want this thing over and done with. Um, I launched it back in week two week three. It's been around for a while and I just like to see this semester end. I, I can't speak for you, I can speak for me. I will be really pleased to meet week 13. I will be on standing up between 2 and 4 p.m. on Friday week 13. I am the last lecture pretty much scheduled on this campus. So I'm going to be kind of keen to see this whole thing knocked out and over and done with. So, I should probably hold up placards and you know, cards and say which section's which. Section zero, basic reporting requirements. Okay. The principle of this section is I want you to be able to run some really simple statistics, to run some very, very basic uh, descriptives, frequencies, and to report on the whole of the data set. So this is the summary overview. The context that I want you to use is that Everything in this assignment is heading back to answer the same management question. And that management question, which is question six in the block, is will the success of the PWX product be influenced by the geographic location of the firm? So, when you are reporting in the basic reporting requirements, you're going to need to be thinking in terms of how does this data set help answer that question. So phrase your response, phrase your answer here. This is the first of the parts of your answer. You're going to talk about the constitution of the data set, the demography, geography, psychography, and the behavioral intention toward the product. Think about the reporting in terms of how does this help the managers of the project answer the question how will our success be determined? Uh, the requirement for external references, which again is still on in this document. Here, what I'm looking at is I'm wanting people to be able to be very deliberate in the decisions and then basically explain to me in one or two sentences with a reference why they ran the analysis that they ran. This project requires you to show your work and to show you're working by reference, citation, and to indicate to me that your decisions were deliberate. And the best way to do that is to use a reference and a citation to say, this was a deliberate act. I know what I was doing and why I was doing it. The only other thing I will say on this is when you start looking at the basic reporting requirements, uh, you can use tables, obviously. A lot of the data that you're going to produce here will be well reported in charts, tables and figures. I want you to be really smart about how you use these tables. Do not just copy and paste directly out of the SPSS output for the tables. Think through. Think how would you represent this material? What's the best way to represent this material? So, the other thing I will point out is that the variables that are useful, gender, year, birth, live, fan, that's the ones I think. But there are other variables in there and there's even the qualitative variables. The open one to six you could go and have a look at and say, is there anything in there that's you know, worth describing?
All right. Business decision questions time now. The way the assessment task is set up is that there are five decision questions and that leads into the sixth, question six, which is the management question. For those of you in groups who divided this up, whoever draws the management question, you are going to be dependent on your teammates for their answers, questions one to five, before you can answer question six. So just a little heads up on that, be, be smart about this. Now I'm going to ask you for three requirements in the business decision questions and I'm just going to briefly outline those. That is, show you're working, use your references, tell me why you are undertaking the behaviour you are undertaking with a citation and get points for it. Two, use the data set. No updating, no fudging, no messing around, no grabbing stuff from elsewhere, no going off and collecting your own data. Just work with it. Uh, but the use of the data set is also very specific and we'll be explaining a little bit how that works as well. Finally, answer the questions. Now this, if there's a secret to this assessment task, it's the fact that it's not a statistics assessment. It's a marketing task. So don't just think stats output and stats analysis and dropping that on the page answers the question. No, it doesn't. Answer the actual question. Each thing's got a question mark. Give me an answer. Twofold training happening here. Number one, back at the tutorial kits, we taught you to answer questions. We trained you to do this. Two, I'm going to have you sitting in an exam room answering a question. Uh, three elements are connected. Your training here is going to help you in the exam room.